you turned up to a shoot, you got your gear figured out, you got your confidence up and running, but then you start filming and you actually realize that you don't know what kind of shots and style of shots you wanna get. How many times has this happened to you? Let me tell you, it actually happened way too often to me. I focused myself on getting the nice camera, the nice lens setup, the nice monitor, without actually spending time in studying my pre-production and spending time actually doing pre-production. I would almost not even prepare for a shoot, just go out knowing kind of what I'm shooting and just wing it with the shots. Just shooting what looks good and that's all. Well, hopefully at the end of this video, this won't be a problem for you anymore. We're gonna cover eight of my favorite cinematic shots that I use throughout my productions. Either it's a well thought through production or it's an on the go travel film, doesn't matter what I'm shooting. I always try and remember these shots and try and remember exactly what I pre-studied. And that's where everything has to start, pre-production. Make a shot list, even though you might not recreate those exact shots, just make a shot list so in your head, you kind of have an idea of what you want to shoot. And once the shot list is done, have it on your phone and try and remember the shots that you actually wanna get. Try and look at the shot and be like, okay, I wanna get this angle, I wanna get this angle, I wanna get this angle. It's a bit harder when you're on the go when things are happening so fast, but if you try and like, why your brain to remember these things, you will eventually get to the point where you just go in autopilot. To be honest, whenever I'm out shooting, especially more on the go travel films, I don't have time to, you know, place a light, place a subject here, place a subject there. I just shoot what's happening most of the time. And I just remember these shots and try and repeat them. So let's get started right away with the first shot, which is the establishing shot. This is very obvious, but every single film should have an establishing shot. Usually this is shot with a wide lens. In this example, I used the Canon FD 28 millimeter, but you can shoot this in any lens. You just have to move backwards or forward closer to the subject. For example, I actually really enjoy shooting wide shots with a 65 millimeter because it gives that nice compressed feeling, but you're still showing the subject interacting within the environment. And that's the idea with an establishing shot. Show the subject, show the whole scene, and then move closer to the subject with the following shots. Shot number two, in no particular order, I just love these kind of shots, is the Dutch angle. The Dutch angle, I love it because there's no rules to it. Pretty much you just take your camera, you angle it in a weird way, you have the horizon all crooked, and you create something interesting with your composition. In this case, I decided to put the incense in the front and the table so that it would reflect me scrolling through my phone. And I just angle it in a weird way so that all the leading lines would lead towards my face and my hand while scrolling my phone. Remember about composition and leading lines when you create this one, because it's very important not to just angle your camera in a weird way, but also make it so the audience is drawn to the subject. Shot number three is kind of similar, but it's the low angle. And this shot is used in movies and commercials to just make the subject look important and just stronger than anything else. You can go as extreme as literally down to the floor or just midway to the chest looking up. Either way, this shot is one that I always include, especially when I'm shooting and held. It's just easy to hold the camera just here on your chest and shooting a little bit towards up so that the subject looked nice and important within whatever you're shooting. I just wanna mention this brand new light that I recently got from Zion is the Cinepier CF100. This tube light is currently actually lighting me from up there as a little bit like a blue halo top light. And it's something that I wanted to use for forever. I love adding these little colors in and there and just be able to direction the light with the barn doors that it comes with. It's beautiful and in the instance that we just shot this whole sequence i actually use it to enhance the main key light that i had outside of my room because it was especially for the close-up it wasn't strong enough on my face so i used this one just rigged up to just enhance the light that was coming on my face and, and make a stronger more interesting contrast especially for those close-up shots Tube lights is something that I love working with and being able to use this light in my production from now on, it's gonna be a game changer and I'm very, very excited to just try it out and use it in all the situations. So if you wanna check out the Zion Cinepure CF100, have a look at the link in the top of the description and check it out because it's a beautiful light and I actually really like to work with this thing, so yeah. 
I think everyone should have a tube light, but let's move back onto the video. Two shots number four, which is the point of view or POV shots. And this is crazy how many commercial, especially now are using these kind of shots and you can rig the camera to something which will make the POV look a little bit more interesting shot. In this case, I simply just put it over my shoulder, very close up and I just show my hands crawling to the phone. But this perspective just add a bit more of like a interactive look into whatever the subject is doing. And it's something that I really love, to be honest. I love rigging my camera in the most absurd places, but you don't actually need it for the POV shots. You can just have a tripod in between the subject and your hands. And uh, yeah, that creates a POV. I use the 28 millimeter from Canon again, just because I want that nice wide look, but close up. Then moving on to shot number five, it's the over the shoulder shot. This is used in movies mostly for interactions and conversations, but to be honest, you can use this as almost a cut in between the wide and the POV, because this is kind of in between. You show the shoulder and the head of the subject, and then you show what they're doing, and then you cut closer to the POV to actually show in this case, my thumb scrolling reels on Instagram, rather than you know texting and exactly seeing what the text saying. You know, you can use this in so many ways, but I like to use this usually just to show what the subject is doing when I don't have the chance of using a POV angle. Or if I do have this POV angle, just a cut in between the wide, medium, POV. Moving on to the one that I just mentioned, which is a medium shot. The medium shot is pretty self-explanatory. It is a medium shot of any subject or body. Usually from the waist up or from the chest up, that's considered a medium shot and medium shots are usually best in my opinion shot on a medium to longer lens i actually love the 65 millimeter from irix and using this lens for medium shots adds a beautiful depth in between whatever foreground you have if you have any and whatever background you have it makes the subject really stand out and in whatever situation the way that i shoot anything is get a wide get a medium get a close up move on Usually this is how I shoot my sequences. And then if I have time, I try and shoot, you know, um, a weird dash angle or a second close up or a POV or over the shoulder. So I incorporate everything that I'm talking about in this video within my sequences. But usually what you have to remember is wide, medium, close up. With the close up, that's the shot number seven. In this case, what I wanted to get was my thumb scrolling on the phone. And you could get this with a micro lens, but to make things quicker, I actually use the 35 millimeter that I'm shooting this now. And I could get that because most wide lenses have a very close focus distance, which means you can actually use them to get pretty good close-ups. You don't need a crazy micro lens to carry with you all the time. So if you don't have the possibility, you don't have the micro lens or whatever the situation, usually a wide lens, if it's a prime lens, especially have a very good close focus. And this is what I use in this occasion. Moving on to the last shot that I want to talk about is getting that wide shot, but with a tight lens. So in this case, I got this shot with a 65 millimeter adding foreground, adding compression into my shot. You can even go 100, 130, or even with a telephoto lens if you like, just to compress a beautiful wide shot where the subject is small in the frame, but super compressed, creating this beautiful landscape and beautiful just scene and composition around the subject. This is one shot that if I can get, I would always get but it's also very hard to carry a telephoto lens with me or a very long lens with me all the time. So usually I use a 65 and I try and get wide shots with that. So these are the eight shots that I think everyone should know and everyone should remember whenever they're shooting any video to make the video a bit more cinematic. Now cinematic is a word that I hate, but people understand that cinematic is exactly the look that I'm trying to chase. Even though I hate the word, this is the look that we're going for. So thanks so much for sticking around. Subscribe and like as always. And check out the Zion Cine PRC F100 again in the link on the top of the description. With that said, see you guys next week in the next one. See ya.